What's good, my friends? Welcome back to Everyday Struggle with Nadeska Academics and Wayno. If we're running a little bit late today, you know the drill. Blame academics. Act, what kept you up so late last night? What's the now, problem? I'm going to take the blame today. Today is one of the days. Give me the blame and I'll gladly take it. I was up last night with Kanye. You know, us men, we were going through some things last night, okay? They took Will Smith from us. Now they're about to take Kanye. This is a very terrible... You know, 2020 is horrible, man. Okay. Nobody took Will Smith from us. Stop what the hell are you it, talking it, about? They <laughs> ruined our childhood here. Yo, come to find He's out who was the real Carlton. Like, come on, man, man. Come on, man. What that got to do with what that got to do with your ass waking up on time so we could start on time? Uh that got to do with me watching Kanye basically like just go through it as a man. I, I kinda understood. All right. Well, Ooh, look, our bro. national <laughs> For real. <laughs> Wait, y'all weren't up to watch that Twitter tirade? Listen, man, the night before was enough. Twitter started to give me nightmares, so I had to just log off early. But anyway, we'll talk about it, of course. So uh, Dave Chappelle, our national treasurer, did fly out to Wyoming to hang out with Kanye, which is really dope. Uh, and then things, of course, got dark again on Twitter. Kanye sort of went in, and random people are just getting caught in the crossfire now. So he said that he's been trying to divorce Kim ever since she met with Meek Mill to talk about prison reform, saying that Meek is his man and he was respectful, but Kim was out of line. He said Lil Baby's one of his favorite rappers, but he won't do a song with him, which I don't know. Baby told us he's pretty generous with the features. Then he also said that Kris Jenner and Kim put out a statement without his approval. That's not what a wife should do. It's white supremacy. Of course, he deleted all of these tweets after... Um, I don't know, Ak, why were you so invested last night? Yeah, I want to know that too. Listen, w w when people usually dismiss Kanye, I usually, I believe everything he says when he goes on these rants. And I, of course, you know, you then start to worry why you put your business out there like this. And by the way, he usually says shit that makes himself look bad. Mm -hmm. So like those things you look at and you're wondering if he's okay. However, like I always believe him when he's telling, when, he, when he's on rants like this. When he said Jay-Z tried to kill me, I believe it. When he said that Beyonce fucking finessed or they had to promise Beyonce the, the MTV award for her to show up, I believed it. Okay, I can um, slow down. Slow down. Yeah, like, fine. If you want to believe, stop it. Stop it. If you want to believe the Beyonce right thing, fine. You think Jay tried to kill Kanye? Okay, may maybe at least his interpretation <laughs> of what that, that is. Yes. Like, I don't okay. think he just randomly made that up. You don't think he randomly makes things up? Or, he, or, or not that he randomly makes things up, but these are things... That are a culmination of all the other shit he's going through, and then he just comes up with this. Man, Jay may have threatened threatened him or something like that. Didn't he, he say he wants he, Jay to be part of the campaign still? Like, what do you? They're they're fine. Anyway, let's keep Jay Z out of this and uh, proceed. Okay, wait. What was, oh, so we're talking about the, no, the no, no. So honestly, if you ask me, right, mm -hmm. I do believe, and as much as people, we're gonna so many people are gonna dismiss and call him crazy, having another episode. I believe this is venting, mm -hmm. and it might be odd to a lot of people to see someone vent to the world, and it seems a little bit incoherent because he doesn't type like the perfect scholar, but I do believe that a lot of the problems he's having, um, despite him suffering from you know bipolar disorder, some of it is coming from his marital life, and some of it is, is, is from family life, and again, you know, some artists, they'll mention it in music, and I'm pretty sure he will mention it in music, but... He chose to tweet some stuff out, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and it's him going through some strife, at least in his mind, um, behind the scenes. And we haven't heard anything else from the opposite side. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's very, like, telling that he would start speaking about white supremacy when it comes to his family, as opposed to speaking about white supremacy for what black people are dealing with in this country. But, you know, I, I, I think it's convenient to him. You know, it's about him, and he is about him no matter what, like... Well, well, also, which again, <laughs> it's easy to chalk up whatever he's saying as crazy, but I didn't say it's crazy. I just said like it's telling. You know? No, well, I'll explain that point, right? If if he's also using references as he feels the movie Get Out is about him, he's definitely if if, if we're using that as a context, he's definitely having that that flash of the camera moment where like you wake up like oh shit, what the fuck going. What the fuck going on over here? I like Chris Jung Un, huh? I don't believe that though. I don't believe the the whole concept of the camera shit was for you to wake up to see where you at. I don't think he's woken up. I think he's just panicking. I think he's panicking because he's he, he's getting he's losing the grip on what he felt he loved the most, which was his family. I don't think that he that he's awakened and he's having this epiphany like, oh shit, this has been wrong the whole time. I just think that he's 
he he feels like he's losing his family, so he's panicking. I feel, I feel in a way he's kind of woken up, and uh, you know, listen, I, I people got to stop thinking that Kanye is like for us. Kanye's always been for him. Nigga, Toes on like one of his first big songs. Like he ain't never, he was never the guy who was like, yo, I'm 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 really here to champion black people's issues. He always yes, he was, was on some shit like he I'm black. That, he was he. No, he was. No, man. no, no, don't, no, don't no, do no, like, no, no. I think, I think you have that wrong. No, Yo, I don't he have was that always, wrong. I'm black, and these issues affect me. So it's my issue now. We talking, but pre once his, those we issues, talking pre his mother passing away, or we talking after? Yeah. His, pre his, nah, 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 bro. Yeah, he yeah, definitely yo. spoke up on a lot. He definitely spoke up on a lot of issues. Nobody would not just be. It's not like the. It, it's not like J. Cole Kendrick shit. Like, come on, we're gonna forget the whole that that the moment, the George Bush moment, all of that. That's, I don't think that's him taking a stance for himself. That's him speaking for people. He always used to speak. I don't give a fuck about him speaking for people no more. All I'm saying is, is that he's dealing with something mentally. He's having a meltdown. All that Dave Chappelle shit was cool. Nobody took his phone after that. Nobody told the nigga to stay off of Twitter after that. He went and went back and dug in and said more personal shit. Then he takes it down. He's having mental issues. And before we had got on, we was talking about him being helped. It's not that he can't afford the help. It's not like he can't doesn't have access to the help. I don't think he wants to be helped. Everybody keeps talking about every how he should be helped and somebody need to help him with his real friends. He don't want to be helped. He's not incoherent. He knows what's going on. Yeah, I, I, even if he's speaking some some truth, you know, mm-hmm. don't you think it's just he clearly, if anything we could take away from this, he loves his kids and he cares about them. This hurts yeah. them too in the long run to know that this happened and see, look, he's going to delete the tweets. It doesn't matter. Once it's on the internet, it's on the internet forever. You know what I mean? To have to see their dad saying these things about their mom and their grandmother, it hurts the family. And I think that's what's the hardest thing to watch at this point. Not that he's naming random rappers. They'll be fine. Yeah, but but do we, we have to acknowledge at times when People feel hopeless or helpless. And by the way, if you've seen some of the screenshots he put up, he's made attempts to talk. Ain't nobody. Come on, bro. If you think again, so no, if no, he's, no, this I, is listen, the I'm, most I'm, I'm, nigga. I'm just I'm just explaining yeah. the thought process of how I'm seeing it get to, to be on the online stage, right? Mm-hmm. It feels like it feels like it's a it's an act of desperation. Now I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying it's an act of desperation, right? Can't communicate, so now he's communicating via this medium. You're right. By the way, the kids, the kids always lose in all these situations, even if it was going to be private. Because if, if they're going to have a custody battle, right, the, um, or or they're going to have or they're going to get divorced, that's going to affect the ki- affect the kids as well. I think when it gets to this point, unfortunately, you know, he's a celebrity and and his platform is viewed by a lot of people. But I think this is an act of desperation. Again, not saying it doesn't affect the kids, but. A lot of people. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just saying this nigga is one of the most famous people in the world. You think that like, I, and I'm not saying like whether Chris should respond to him or not. That's beyond me. You know what I mean? Like that's beyond me. But I'm just saying it's like if he's sharing that, he'll share anything else. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm just looking at it like he'll share anything else. And I mean, for his family, so like, that. yeah, but I'm, I'm exactly. So we. Ex- he, what is he showing people that for? Like, is it for sympathy? Does he, if he don't give a fuck about what nobody thinks, then does he need people's sympathy? I'm just, you know, I'm Kanye, great artist and think, all, very confusing human being. Very confusing human being. Call it genius, call it whatever you want. I just think he need to get his shit together in life. Fuck that billion dollars that he got. Fuck them gap deals. Fuck all that other stuff. He needs to get his life together when it comes to what he has going on behind the scenes. I don't care about none of that presidential run, none of that shit. I, th- I think Kanye um, says that, that hoping that people could understand what he might be going through. You get me? So like, like again, you know, there's always questions about his erratic behavior. Why do you think like this? Why do you think like that? I, I do think he's one of those people, he's like, yo, I'll just, I'm going to give you the truth of what is going on in my life that at least you have some some more context to stuff. And also, w- one thing that was glaringly obvious to me after I, I was watching him tweet a bunch, a, um, there's a lot of self-validation that's going on with him and his career. Like, like again, and, and again, this is just me talking, and I'm going a little bit off, uh, 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 off rails right here, but, like, even him mentioning Meek 
And Kim, he followed it up by saying, I'm worth $5 billion. Like he was so offended by, by even that thought that, that, you know, let's say if anything even possibly happened, right? It, it's he, he he's constant it, it seems like he's you know like even when he, he dealt with forbes where like yo i had to send stuff in the forbes that they could really know i'm a billionaire because they don't want to it feels like those things are compensating for other things that he might be either lacking or just kind of you know insecure about um, he has a fragile ego uh, or insecure about right so when i'm only connecting those two things but then when you think about other things you could probably even think about the presidential race you get me? Like, what is what is he trying to compensate for? Maybe in, in his own personal life. Nobody don't take so, that. that. Nobody taking that shit serious. That presidential yeah. shit. Then, that shit is nobody. Yeah, none of us are serious. therapists here, so I feel like yeah. there's only so far we can deep dive into this. But I can understand as a fan and a commentator, you want to try to put the dots together. But I, I think you shouldn't try so hard. You know what I mean? Um, I just don't want this to continue, man. This this can't be. Although the album is coming, so if it's really coming this Friday, we're probably going to keep hearing more from him in the next few days or weeks. Um, is this secular music or is this going to be a go- another gospel album? Like, what, that's what that's another thing. Like, we don't even. Mm-hmm. What is this? I I, th- I think he'll be neutral, which means he'll be God will be infusing him, but not like oh, I'm aiming to do gospel. But but on the last thought about like this get out thing. Come on, man. The Kardashian curse has devoured many black men. Like, let's keep it trill. Is it that crazy? Or not, let me stop using the word crazy. Is it that off base to think, right? That if maybe he gets up under that spell, <laughs> Kanye might be a little bit more, you know, like what people might consider as sane or stable? Like, come on, someone, man. They someone, devoured everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, but did someone trap him into the family? Did they lure him in and trap him? Or I, we did don't he not have make... sympathy for him? We just got to understand. Okay. I don't right. know, bro. I mean, I don't understand. Like, I hear all that shit, but I don't like it. Ain't like he wasn't doing. Shit he basically was that, telling that Travis, question. "You next, nigga." <laughs> I'm trying to get out. <laughs> I'm trying to get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll see. We'll see. All right, man. Reggie Bush somewhere chilling, like yo, uh, 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 Ray J. Like I missed the bullet. Like you know what I mean. Like Tristan, like what the fuck did I sign back up for? Like I guess Chris Humphries is okay. Over there, man. He ain't black. Chris I guess he's okay. Yo, <laughs> remember Chris Humphries? <laughs> Yeah, Chris Jong Un, come on, bro, that's a Kim classic Jong-un. nickname. <laughs> no, he's just... oh, he put Chris Jong Un. <laughs> come on, man, like come on, come oh, on, man. bro. All right, man, I'm, I'm Kanye out. All right, all right. And, 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 yes, one more thing, my man. Yo, he's cool. you came too late to have more thoughts. Yeah, Trump like, on time. Yo, we gotta be late today, man. We gotta be late today. Fuck that. Hold on, yo, <laughs> the, the, yo, um, oh my god, I just love. Good, exactly. Good, Let's keep great. it moving. So, uh, <laughs> Lil Wayne has been hosting Young Money Radio on Apple Music. I think he's been killing it. He's had really great guests, some good conversation, a lot of viral clips so far. So recently he had Birdman on. During their conversation, Birdman said that NBA Youngboy will be one of the biggest artists that we've ever seen. Uh, Birdman definitely knows a thing or two about creating superstars. Obviously, Youngboy already has a really big, loyal fan base. Um, do you guys think he could go on to be one of the biggest ever? What's missing? Like, What does he need to do right now? Yeah, I think I think he is. I mean, Birdman ain't off with this one. They did a mixtape two years ago. You know what I mean, they did a whole project together. So it's like Birdman not off with this one. Um, I think the only thing that NBA YoungBoy is missing that would get him that star quality is just being seen. You know what I mean? I, I, of course, with everything that's going on due to COVID, like he can't be out moving around. But I'm talking about like you know making the rounds where everybody sees him. I think like you know that's that's the thing that makes you a superstar when you are hitting all the media outlets when people you not in people's faces but you're around a bit you know what i'm saying like i i like the fact that nba young boy does kind of stay to himself though you know what i mean like i think that's why he's been able to be so successful because he is very careful with how he picks and chooses his friends you know what i mean he is very careful with who he stands next to but i would just like that i would love to see him and um uh frontline bt awards i would love to see an nba young boy site in a, in a bt cipher like those are the things that propel you to being another, I mean, being a, a bigger artist. So I, I just would like to see him make more rounds in the industry a bit. Act, do you think he's hesitant to more exposure? Because you guys sat down and did a really long interview, right? I was kind of looking forward to seeing that. Yeah, um, he's not interested in, in doing any of this at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I do think he's strategic. You know, he knows what he's doing, putting out music. He knows that, it, which I'll even bring up Uzi as well, because there's a batch of newer artists 
that that have um like you know people said the mystique is going with social media. Young boy somehow keeps it a little bit, whether he disappears on social media every couple of days. You know, mm-hmm. like again, you 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 want of course to have a balance of okay, it's time to present yourself. So you present yourself in small doses, then you can kind of disappear. But they've kind of also kind of kept people um, interested in them by kind of being elusive a little bit. Like, hey, not gonna be doing that. So if I end up doing it, by the way, these are young, young, young guys. So who knows? Young boys just like turn twenty. Like, I mean, maybe in a couple of years he would. But I think I think what Birdman was trying to base that off. Um, if you think about Boosie's career, right? And by the way. You know, as we, you know, sometimes we're New York centric in thinking. People don't realize even what Boosie is to the South. Like what the the, the phase of Young Boy's career right now that he's in, where he pretty much got the youth. He's dropping these 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 projects and records that people are connecting with, even if it's not on the biggest mainstream level. Yeah. That if that continues, right, <laughs> I could see him having that impact. Also, Burma gonna be a little bit yeah. biased on Louisiana shit. Yeah, but I, I I could see where he's saying he could be one of the biggest artists. You know what I mean? But um, truth be told, I think he's on pace to be the that that southern kind of like goat in in a for this generation in the same vein as Boosie more than being the biggest artist ever. Well, I think I think well you know to that I think that he could be in the space kind of like Lil Wayne. Like to me, like you know I was a teenager when Lil Wayne first came out. You know what I'm saying? So it was like. Lil Wayne had an effect on everywhere. Like people in New York, I'm talking about black is hot Lil Wayne. Not but when he started metaphor rapping and all of that shit. And Young Boy has that hit. Like shit, it's tons of kids playing his shit up north. I mean, everywhere you go, he has the youth. I just think he's a record. Like he he just doesn't have like that definitive record that gets everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Like the kids can't take nothing away from him. His fan base, they know his shit front to back. I'm talking about like that that record that everybody knows. I think he's had that record before, though. You think so? Yeah, I, I just think that's that, that, that's 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 hit on like mainstream airwaves mainstream. everywhere. Like, nah, that hasn't hit mainstream. Yeah, yeah but, but 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 you know the game you have to play to be that rapper, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah, but that's so, what so I was it's saying. Like, so it's, are, are, are we just expecting them to have a completely? I've seen records that could go. Like he, he had a record that was um that that I believe debut either top ten or top fifteen mm-hmm. um in the last year. He had the little top record. He also had, uh, you know, Lonely Child was a, was, a, was a great song for a lot of people. Make No Sense was a great record for, for I love I love all three of those records. What's the joint when he I said, think, I feel like I'm Gucci Mane in 2006? Yeah, that's, that's Make No that's Sense. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those records could have really went. That's what I'm saying. But here's the thing. Like, he's horrible at promoting his own music. I love Young Boy. <laughs> right. But he drops, he drops a music video at 3 a.m. with one Instagram post. He doesn't tweet about it. He doesn't say, hey, fans, let's all get ready. Now, when if if that's your temperament in releasing and and is that promoting promote music, how could a label get behind you? And be like, all right, cool, we're gonna spend three hundred thousand on a radio budget. We're gonna get this in rotation. Great, we need to do a couple radio interviews. Yo, young boy, we need like twenty drops. We need, hey, you need yeah. to do these things. Hey, but you but, gotta go I mean, see with Spotify. Part, let's let's get these meetings. That's these a part are of things the game, to though. push a record. If, if, but, if you're, 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 but look, you're not going to do that to push a record. And, and then that's guy, I know we got to go to the next thing, so I'll say this lastly. But act, remember when we was having this conversation before, and he was like, man, that shit is dick riding. He was like, that's that's all dick riding. That, th- this is the game that you in. Like, this is his career. So I'm just saying, like, he's very successful, making tons of money, got his shit damn packed. He's good. But what I'm saying is, is like, if he wants to reach that next level, because remember, we was talking about that regarding Uzi. If he wants to reach that next level. No, you, we, were talking, we were talking about awards, though. Oh, we was talking about awards. You got no, we talking about awards, songs, bro. But, but that's what I'm saying. Like a lot of the artists don't they they work so hard, take three two years to put music out, and then don't promote it. That's a part of being an artist. That's like you you can't be a fucking uh, athlete and not show up to practice or not do the the, the post game interviews and stuff did. like that. That's a lot. That's a lot. See, see, we not gonna go there. We not gonna go there. <laughs> okay. Yo, look, like you guys said, he's twenty. That's so young. He has another Man, whole young. decade ahead of him to accomplish all of that. Really quick, uh, Birdman also said he wants to retire from rapping. He's done with it, and he asked Wayne if he would be down to do a farewell thing like father, like son too. Do we want this? Yes or no? Quickly. Absolutely, absolutely. I won't even think about it. Yeah, feel good moments in rap are always welcome. All right, so and tonight, through hell and back they really have been through hell and back, so it'd be some nice closure for them musically. Tonight, DMX versus Snoop Dogg versus streaming live on Instagram, on, on Apple Music, if you want that super HD quality 
predictions, please. Uh, yo, I ain't gonna lie. I'm. I, I want to go with DMX, but Snoop just has so many like. Uh, I don't know. He has so many massive worldwide hits, but it's gonna be good. I just say that it's gonna be good. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think Snoop's um, records will connect with the with more people, but I believe if if DMX sets a certain tone, which which that's where your in person demeanor matters. You know what I mean? If he's there a little bit, you know what I mean, hungover, I don't know. But if he's there growling, her, like I'm telling you, man, we could have a whole different type of movie. Dog versus the dog. You know what I mean? So it, it depends on the temperament here. Both of these guys are legends, you know, so really no one is going to really lose. But if you're talking about one having a better I, I, I'm like showing, it, it probably could be Snoop if DMX don't come right. You know what I mean? But, but we will not blame Swiss. Swiss, don't you get DMX on this joint looking crazy now. What? I just, one thing that, one thing I do want from both of them is I definitely want each of them to play one unreleased record that we've never heard. Mm. I, I would okay. love for, for both of them to do that. That'd be fire. All right, let's see if we see either of you guys in the chat um, tonight. I saw academics pop up in the Beanie Man one, of course, but we were off of that course. week. That's the only time I ever seen Act participate in something like that. That was the like best verses. Like, oh no, of God, course, like... you had to represent for Jamaica. Um, all right, guys, thank you for watching Everyday Struggle. We're back here tomorrow with our last episode of the week. Check out Versus. Let's talk tomorrow. Bye. If we late, blame this one on me. Blame this one on me. We had to, Kanye. We got to. We, we doing Kanye part two tomorrow. This is ridiculous. I I was seriously hurt. Okay, academics. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>